During this year, 2025, Unreal presented for the first time the AI assistant during the state of Unreal. It was fantastic. The promise is great. And that promise is now a reality in the preview of Unreal 5.7. Imagine asking Unreal how to fix your code or how to create your code and it answers inside the Unreal Engine platform. Today, Unreal presents us with the Unreal AI Assistant. And in this video, I'm going to introduce you how amazing this is. Comment, like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss the future tutorials of Unreal, the creation of our third-person shooter that for code that you have access to, and the methodology and strategies that you should use to create a successful career in video games. Now, let's show how this assistant works. There are two ways to use the AI assistant of Unreal 5.7. The first one is going to the web page of Unreal, log in, and then click on the learning. Once inside the learning, go to the left and select the option that says Developer Assistant. This is the beta of the AI Assistant, and you can use it outside of Unreal. For example, let's say that I want to create a first-person shooter in Unreal with C++. Tell me how to start. The first information they will present you is related to some content that Unreal already have to help you create your project. In my case, related to the first person shooter tutorial and setting up your project. You can click on this. I'm sorry, they presented a lot of information. You can click here and you can start looking at those first tutorials to start your project. But the most interesting part is that even though they present you these links, they also offer you the method that you can follow to create your project from zero. For example, look at these steps. Create a new C++ project on Real Engine, open on Real Engine, go to blank. Literally, you are starting from zero and set project type of C++. These are steps that you can follow. And then you can start building one element of your game at a time. Also, you have the conversations to the left that you've been creating with this AI assistant. And if at some point you want to remove one of these chats, just click here and select delete. But the other thing is that you can start creating a chat here. And once you move to Unreal, you can have access to that chat as well. The second method of using Unreal Assistant is by adding a plugin to your project. I created a project that I launched from 5.70, which is the preview. Then I select games, third person, and a C++. This is the project I created. Now let's enable the AI Plugin Assistant. Go to Edit, Plugin, and look for AI Assistant. You will see it as experimental. Check it and accept because you need to restart your project. Now I want to create a new environment. Let's say this new level in an open world. Okay, where the character is going to be. And if I click on Windows, on the bottom, you have an option that is named AI Assistant that you can also access by Alt F1. This is the same AI Assistant that you were using that I presented a second ago on the website. You can click here to log in in your account. And once you accept, you can create a new chat, but you can also check the chats that you build outside on Real. And that's a pretty cool thing to have. Now let's show how powerful this is. And we are going to start with some basic prompts. Let's say, what is the difference between a pawn and a character? in Unreal Engine. A very basic question in Unreal. As you can see, first they provide you with a definition, a basic definition, which is very important if you are starting in Unreal. For example, in the case of Pawn, base class for any controller, a controllable actor, represents the physical presence of a player or AI in the world, including location and collision. Movement has to be implemented manually using the set actor location or custom movement components. And they have also the character and which is a subclass of the pawn and it tells you what are the difference. 
in particular comes comes with built-in components like the capsule component, the character movement component, and the skeletal mesh. As you can remember in other tutorials where we are creating this third-person shooter, remember that we started with a character class and all these components were part by default of this class. And I want to take just a moment to invite you to check the entire creation process of this third-person shooter. The link is in the description. And at the bottom, you also have the pawn. You can see the documentation here. And you also have the character and also all the details for that documentation. What I want to say with this example is that for basic prompts, this is basically a built-in reference, like the dogs bat faster. If you want to put order in your conversations with AI and you decided that, let's say, I want to remove this conversation, click on this arrow, these three points, and delete. And this will delete your conversation. When you want to start a new conversation, you can also click here on this plus and start a new conversation. Even if you have another conversation open, let's say something like this one, and I want to start a new conversation, click here and you will be able to do it. Let's move now to a core demo. I want to create a practical de development prompt. So let's start with a conversation like the next one. Give me a C++ code to add a jump action to a character, to a character using enhanced input system. As usual, you have the first suggestions inside the documentation of Unreal, but it's still trying to find a best solution to your request. Let's open a bit of space here to read better. And as you can see, here is a concise C++ example to add a jump action to a character using Unreal Engine's 5's enhanced input system. If we go to the bottom, let me try to move it here. If we go to the bottom, the first thing they do is defining the U properties for the input action and also adding the input mapping context, all related to steps that are being presented on the third person shooter that we are creating. This is the header file. And you also have on the bottom the implementation, starting by checking that you have the enhanced input uh, controller established and then binding the actions between the jump action and the function that you want to call. In this case, the onJump started and then on onJump canceled. If you decided, you can also copy this entire code and add it to your own code. Let me drag the assistant to the top. And now in the C++ classes inside this project that I created, which was a third person using C++, it was not an empty project. It already have a third person character. Let's open this class. By inspecting the header file, you can see that we have a jump action defined as a U property. If we go and compare with the assistant, here is the same, let's place one beside the other. Let's close this. We can realize that the U property edit defaults only, very similar to this one, but the most important element is the U input action, the jump action. They define the pointer in different ways, but at the end, this should work the same. So let's make just one simple test. Let's copy this line of code. I can copy this line of code directly, but I can copy the entire code. So let me open a notepad to paste the entire code and then just selecting this line of code for the property. Go back to the Visual Studio and I'm going to replace this line with the new one. Let's comment this one and save. Back in Unreal, let's compile. Everything is working and if I try to play the game, let me move the system to one side. And let's say I want to jump. The jump is still working using the code that we obtain using the AI assistant. Now, keep in mind that the AIs are here to assist you, not to make your work. 
And I think that the best way to explain this is the AI of the movie Iron Man and of Tony Stark, Jarvis. I love Jarvis. But the reality, and I think this is the best example, is that Jarvis can't do anything without the direction that is presented by Tony Stark. In this case, you are Tony Stark and you are telling the AI exactly what you are trying to achieve. And then the AI is helping you in the process to implement this fast. Now, if you want to create your video game, you need to have an idea of exactly what you want to design. And this tool is fantastic because it will help you implement this idea fast, really, really fast. But you need to understand the concepts. What is the logic of the development? Because even though they can present you with code, it's it's key, it's essential that you understand the lines to know what is happening. Because there are some points that you need to change just one element of the line of code. And that's only because you have the experience. You know how to program. A clear example of what I just mentioned is me having the possibility of understanding that this line of code will be exactly than this line of code. Because in this case, I am creating a pointer to this jump action. But I can create a pointer this way or just using the U input action and an asterisk before writing move action. I know that because I know how to program in C++. And that helped me in the communication with this AI assistant. Another fantastic use of the AI assistant is when we are detecting errors to debug our code. Let's add something that is extreme. Uh, Let's say that I'm going to add after this jump, something like jump on. Of course, there is an error. I'm going to save it and let's compile in Unreal. So here I have the error. Now let me take the last section of the compiled so he can tell me where is the error. Tell me the source of the error presented on this output log. And here he's cleaning all the information in an output log, getting me exactly to where the error is. He's telling me it's on the file header of well, this name, line 39, and the error found job action when expecting end of type declaration. Going to our code, this is the line 39 and where the error was found. And later, it provides me with some solutions or some considerations I should have in the declaration, and also an example of how this should be presented. I've been working with AI for some time by now, and I've enjoyed the entire process of having conversations and having iterations with this technology, trying to solve particular challenges that I found throughout my creation of video games. Having said that, imagine the possibilities that you are offered today where you can use this technology to create the new video game that you want to build and understanding the basic concepts of programming C++ and of course Unreal to build whatever experience you want to share with the world. But also keep in mind that even though you are creating a great game, if you don't share what you are creating, you don't exist. And if you don't exist, you can find job opportunities or a community that support the things that you are building. This is why I created the Game Creator Accelerator. And I want to invite you to learn more by visiting William.com. The link is in the description. And if you want to have the chance to talk with me directly, you also have a link on my calendar so we can explore if the GCA is something that will offer you exactly what you're looking for. Today, you are presented with a great technology. And now imagine using that great technology and a methodology to let yourself be known for the entire world and change your path, your career path, maybe doing things that you don't like to start building things you feel passion for. Thanks for watching this video. Remember, like, subscribe, comment, and ring the bell so you don't miss any progress on not only this kind of tutorials, but also the methodology, the strategies, and also the tutorials related to Unreal and how to create your own games. So what are you waiting for? Until next time, keep creating, keep sharing, and most importantly, keep dreaming big. I'll see you soon, my fellow creators.